A pair of social media posts are causing controversy in the church. Josh Harris, who wrote the bestseller, I Kiss Dating Goodbye, admitted he's left the faith. And Marty Sampson, a worship leader with Hillsong, says he's struggling to keep it. Yeah, recently I talked with John Cooper, lead singer of the group Skillet, about what he believes might be the root of the problem. Uh, John, why did you feel the need to write this post? Uh, first of all, great to be here. Um, I felt the need to do this uh, not to attack anybody, not out of hatred, not out of anger. I just was sad. I was depressed. Um, these are people that have influenced my life, my kids' lives, my friends' lives, my church. And it's so saddening and so disheartening. And I just want to make a call to the church to grab a hold again of the preeminence of the Word of God and that there is absolute truth that Jesus is the way, and they're so these social media platforms are so big, and these voices are so loud, I just want to say, hey, I'm really sad about this. I didn't think anybody would care about my post, to be honest. I didn't think anybody would even read it, but I'm sad about it, and i just pleading for the church to come back to the gospel, to come back to the truth of the Word of God that never changes. Uh, John, in your post, you warn Christians to stop making worship leaders and other influencers including yourself, uh, the most influential people in Christendom. Uh, explain what you mean by this. Yeah, what I mean by this is that if you look the right way, if you sing the right way, if you sound the right way, then you can become uh, a, a, an extremely powerful person in today's Christian culture. Because unfortunately, the church, me included, my, my church included, my family included, unfortunately, the church is looking to be entertained. We are not looking to worship God as he ought to be worshiped. We're looking for people to feed us and entertain us. And so what we have is that we're elevating people that sing the right way. And we are letting things get away with lyrics and songs, perhaps. Uh, uh, skillet. I've written a lot of songs that I would not want to be sung at church because they are not theologically accurate enough to sing about God's character. So that's what I mean about that. I don't want to be the person that people listen to. I want the Word of God to do that. And there are people that are gifted and anointed from God to be sharing the Word. And that's who I want to see us elevate. Yeah, you, you mentioned the preeminence of the Word of God. Let's talk about that for a few seconds here. You are urging uh, believers to rediscover the preeminence and the value of the Word of God. Why is that so important? Well, it's important because we're not just seeing this in the church. We're seeing it all of culture. We are basically seeing the, the uh, grandchildren of 1960s postmodern thought. That the absolute truth is done. What's true for you might not be true for me. We're seeing it in everything, uh, at, at, in the universities. We're seeing it in politics. Everybody is so confused about what truth is. And the church is supposed to be invading culture with the kingdom of God. And instead, we are letting the culture invade the church. And that's not the way that we're supposed to do it. Jesus is the only thing in this world that will never change. Everything else is going to fall away. Everything else is going to change. But his word stands forever. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if we lose that, then, then we basically lose everything. Uh, real, real quickly, last question. You have been involved in the Christian music scene for many, many years. John, how do you stay balanced uh, and true to the word of God? Through reading the Word of God, through studying it, through my pastors, through the people that I listen to, uh, and as I say, I am no theologian. Nobody wants me to start being a theologian. That's not what I'm trying to do. I stay balanced by, by feeding myself truth, even when that truth can sometimes be somewhat inconvenient. There are things about God that I've had to struggle with, uh, and, and I realize, you know what, if I'm struggling with who God is— it's not God that needs to change. It's me that needs to change. That's what lordship is about. And we are losing that uh, in a generation of young people. And, and I think that we could be doing a much better job of preaching truth. And it's, and it's not just the, 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 the leaders I'm talking about. I'm talking about all of us. The church, we need to say, you know what? I don't want to look for what is entertaining. I don't want to look to what tickles my ears. I want to look, look for what is right and true. And if my ideas have got it wrong that I need to change my ideas of, of who God is. Okay, terrific. John, thank you so much. I appreciate your insights and coming on the show. Love it.